What is up, Flick fans, and welcome back to another tier list video. Today, we are talking about all of the movies, well, most of the movies that Illumination has done. I have to admit up top, I have never seen the movie Hop, and the list that I'm using does not actually have The Secret Life of Pets 2 as an option, so I'm going to use the Hop thumbnail and replace it with The Secret Life of Pets 2 thumbnail. That's kind of cheating and it's kind of lazy, but hey, you're watching the movie Hop for this. It's a lot of effort. I probably should have done it. But you know what? We're talking about Illumination because of the release of Secret Life of Pets 2 this week. And that review came out on my channel, I believe, two weeks ago. And Illumination as a studio is a very interesting topic of conversation because they started out on a really strong note. The Despicable Me franchise was really good in the beginning, and I was excited to see what they were going to do next. They took the Dr. Seuss route and actually promised that they were going to take those movies and rejuvenate them for a new generation. They've had original content such as Secret Life of Pets and Sing. Today we're talking about them, and my tier list is set up as it was in my May movies tier list. I've changed it from when I first started, but I really like this format. Awesome, great, good, solid, meh, bad, and awful. Let's start with the first movie on this list, and it's actually the very first Despicable Me film. I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. This, to me, is still one of the better movies from Illumination, and Steve Carell, his voice carries the entire film, but is also the daughters, man. The voice cast in general is great. I think the daughters are so cute. This is such a fun movie, and this is really one of the best examples. When you look at the history of Illumination, bringing together what the adults like and bringing together what the kids like into one solid combination in the vein of what Pixar does with most of their films and even what Spider-Verse did, right? It had a lot of stuff that kids are going to love, but you have that adult sense of humor. You have those things here and there that maybe kids won't directly understand, but you also have a fun adventure. You have good characters. You have Gru and his relationships all throughout the movie. What he wants to do to be this big evil villain, but you start seeing that heart come out when he adopts all of these kids. And overall, guys, the first Despicable Me for me is one of the better Illumination movies. Obviously, you'll figure out how I feel about it by the end, but I am actually going to place this in the great tier. I think this is a great movie. It is a franchise that started from this one idea and now it's developed into this giant box office dominator as Illumination does really well with most of their films. Most of their movies do really solid at the box office. Next up on this list is Despicable Me 3, but actually I'm going to go in order of this franchise. I'm going to talk about Despicable Me 2. Now I am one of the ones who likes Despicable Me 2 quite a bit. I don't quite love it as much as I love the first one. I do think there are some flaws in the storytelling here and there, and it does go down the kids' route a bit more than the first. I think some of the jokes aren't as well constructed as they were in the first movie, but you know what? It's still thoroughly enjoyable, and the dynamic between Gru and Lucy, who is voiced by Kristen Wiig, who comes into this movie and almost steals the entire film is great. You see that romance begin to spark. It's something that you never pictured in the first movie, but now you have the relationship with the kids, but you also have Lucy coming in and making an impact on his life. And El Macho, voiced by Benjamin Bratt, was awesome in this movie. Such a fun villain. I like the villain in the first one a lot, but the villain in the second one, to me, is still one of my favorites just because of like bringing the elements of WWE in there and putting on a show and just the excitement from that villain. Once again, I don't think it's as strong as the first movie. It's not as well constructed, but it's still a really good time and a solid sequel for a movie that a lot of people love. So because of that, I am placing Despicable Me 2 on the good tier. And now we move on to Despicable Me 3. And for me, going into this, looking forward to it, especially after seeing that trailer, I love the trailer and I love the concept of Trey Parker coming in here as this villain and really bringing what he always brings to voice animation, an exciting villain. And I do believe he did that. And I also like the concept of Gru and his brother, both voiced by Steve Carell, coming in and having their dynamic on top of the kids and on top of Kristen Wiig's character that we got in a second one. And while I was excited about those concepts, looking back on it, going in, I should have been more hesitant because that's a lot of storylines going on at once. And that's the biggest problem I have with the movies. There is just so much going on. They try to flesh out every individual character and they try to give the girls 
more to do than they had in the last one, which is okay, but the girls for me are there to be really cute and sweet and have their storylines, yes, but not overpower the rest of the movie. And speaking of overpowering the rest of the movie, the minions, who I haven't even talked about yet, are perfect in the first two films. They're used sparingly. They are a bit annoying, but they're supposed to be annoying. That's why they're so cute in the first two movies. In this movie, they're not used as sparingly as they were. They're kind of overpowering to the rest of the film. And yes, they're funny at times, but sometimes the jokes, they just go too far. Or they come to the point to where you're looking at and you're saying, this is directly for kids and I'm getting nothing out of it. Yes, it's a kid's movie, but who has to take the kids to the movie theaters that's the adults, and I don't think Despicable Me 3 is nearly as strong as the first two movies, bringing all of those concepts together, making us laugh, and giving us a solid story. I still don't think it's horrible, like some people believe it is, but I think it's just kind of meh, and because of that, I'm going to put it in the meh category. I think that's where it belongs. Some people may say it's solid, some people may say it's bad. I think it's just meh. Next up, we have Sing. Now, Sing is a movie that... I did not see in theaters. I did not see Sing until like last year, two years after it released. And you know what? It was actually cuter than I anticipated. I was afraid that it was going to be way too cheesy and way too far in the kids category. And just seeing the trailers and seeing it come out in theaters before I was reviewing movies as often as I do now, I'm like, you know what? I can skip this one. Finally watched it with my wife. We both had a good time with it. We enjoyed it. Is it great in terms of the plot, something we've never seen before? Not really. Does it have this story that's going to leave you wanting more? I don't think so, but it is fun. It's exciting. You have all of these singers coming in here and providing their voices for these characters and actual actors. You have Taron Edgerton, who is actually a good singer coming in here. And what do they do? Well, it's the title of the movie. They sing. They have this American Idol style competition with Matthew McConaughey's voice at the head of the entire film. And that entire concept was fun. Once again, not revolutionary. Nothing I have never really seen before in terms of animation and humor and style. And it is pushing that, oh, it's completely for kids, not necessarily for adults, but there was adult stuff in there, and because of that, I'm putting Sing on the solid tier, because it's solid. Next up, we have Minions, the standalone movie in the Despicable Me franchise, and like I said, the Minions are good when they are used sparingly, when they don't overpower the rest of the characters. This is a movie called Minions, so they could not be used sparingly, and they did overpower really this entire franchise after this film. I think Illumination, they saw this and they said, you know what, we have something here because this movie obviously made over a billion dollars and we are going to put them at the forefront of every movie from here on out. We're getting a Minions 2, we got the Despicable Me 3 and they were used, they were overused in Despicable Me 3, I'll say that. And that's because of the success from Minions, not critical success, because I don't think this is a good movie. I think this was a movie directed clearly towards children without anything for adults, and that's fine. Kids are going to love this film, but that doesn't mean I have to love it. Yes, it slightly did its job, but it's so dumb at times. I'm thinking to myself, are kids going to watch this and get the right idea? Because this is just, this is a dumb movie with dumb characters. Yes, it's cute, and I did have a couple of chuckles here and there, but at the end of the day, I look at Minions and I say, why did you not use them as sidekicks? That's what they are. They are not meant to lead a movie. That's a critical perspective. The box office perspective tells us something completely different. So I don't blame them for bringing us a sequel. Just please, with the sequel, give us a story. Give us a character to latch onto and then bring the minions. Then bring the humor. I'm going to put minions on the bad tier because I, I just think it's a bad movie. And we come to Illumination's remake of The Grinch. I was uh, very fearful of this film. I walked into it with very low expectations. I walked out thinking it was a bit better than I thought it was going to be. You know, I didn't have the worst time with The Grinch. Some people said it was the worst animated movie of that year. Do I believe it deserved to get nominated for certain awards that it was getting nominated for? No, absolutely not. But The Grinch had some cute moments. It had a decent voice cast. I thought Benedict Cumberbatch did a good job. The problem is, once again, we go back to Illumination, this studio consistently brings us movies that are just dumber than we want them to be. I wanted this movie to be a bit smarter. I didn't want it to shoehorn in all of the songs and the cringeworthy dance moves that kids are doing and loving nowadays. It did that. It made a Grinch for a new generation. Yes, but this new generation, I, I blame the 
new generation, but I'm just saying it's very awkward and cringeworthy when you try to incorporate these elements into a movie like this, a Dr. Seuss film. Yes, it was colorful. Yes, I enjoyed elements. And I do think this movie works for the target audience because while it is a bit dumb, it's not dumb enough to where it doesn't give us a solid story and a solid plot. Yes, it does have the story and the plot to pull from. All you had to do is pull that exact story from the Grinch that everyone knows and loves, and they did that. They just incorporated a ton of elements that I didn't necessarily love. I also didn't necessarily gravitate towards the characters that I love, but for kids, I think it's, it's solid, and I'm going to put it on the solid tier. And we circle back around to the Lorax and I feel the exact same way as I did with the Grinch, except I may actually like the Lorax a bit more than the Grinch. I had more fun with this movie. I think the voice cast is great. Danny DeVito is perfection in terms of what the Lorax is as a character. Otherwise, it gives us similar beats and elements of the Illumination movies and all the same problems, right? But these movies, like I said, they're made for a younger generation, a generation that finds things like this really funny. Fun fact, this movie came out in 2012, so it is officially seven years old at this point. This is when Illumination was still learning what they are and what they can do, but it's weird because I think this is one of Illumination's better movies. I would put it above the Grinch. I would put it on par on the same level as seeing Approaching Despicable Me 2, even though I'm not going to quite put it on that good tier. I'm going to put it on the solid tier because I think, once again, it's a solid movie for the audience that is going to go and watch something like this and it's a fun movie to go back and revisit. I watched it like two years ago. It was okay. It was cute. I had a decent time with the characters. I'm not going to sit here and say it's awful because I don't believe it is, but it's not one I'm going to say adults are going to love. And now finally we have the Secret Life of Pets franchise. I was very excited for this franchise, especially when I first saw that first trailer for the first movie. I just said first three times in a row. I thought it could be really cute. I like the voice cast, I like the idea of what do pets do when they're by themselves at the houses and what goes down when the adults aren't there or when the humans aren't there, right? You see the first movie, I was very underwhelmed with the first film. I didn't think the story got even close, even measured up to what the concept was, what do pets do. Now, they did in the first 15 minutes explore that. And I really enjoyed that. And if the entire movie, even though the plot wouldn't have been the best, if it would have done that, I would have been okay. Because kids love that. Adults love that. I was laughing in the theater. But then they got into the actual story and, and what the movie does and what these characters go through. And you just don't care because it's ridiculous. Kevin Hart, even though he's great in the movie, his storyline with the rabbit, everything just didn't come together in the package that I wanted it to. And because of that, I'm going to put The Secret Life of Pets in the meh tier. Like I said, really cute moments, really cute characters, ideas and concepts that they try to explore at first, but by the time you get to the third act, it just does not measure up in the same vein of Despicable Me 3. It doesn't measure up to what you want it to accomplish as an animated film. And now, even though it says hop, we'll change that here in just a second, Secret Life of Pets to the movie, the reason why we are doing this. And this is another movie that I would go ahead and, and, and give away what I'm going to do. I'm going to place it in the meh category, even though I believe this is a better film than the first. I think this accomplishes more. I think this is a movie that has a stronger plot. There are three storylines happening here. One storyline, I liked it. I thought it was okay. The other storyline, didn't care as much, but I'm still like, okay, it's fine. And then the third storyline, I didn't care at all. I thought it was ridiculous. The entire thing with the circus and the tiger and bringing it to, okay, you're pushing it. You needed to give these characters something to do. One thing you did accomplish, and I'll give the movie this, the first two acts of this movie were significantly better than the first two acts of the first movie because it was a story that I was more interested in, along with more of the tropes of the dogs at home by themselves, not having anything to do, not just dogs. You have bunnies and, and cats and stuff. But then the third act of this movie, I think, is worse than the third act of the first. So a very mixed bag as a Secret Life of Pets franchise, even though I would definitely put the sequel above the original, still can't quite put it in that solid category because I don't think the movie as a whole is solid, even though I think there were decent moments 
So there you guys go. Everything except for Hop. Sorry, I, I still haven't watched Hop, but you know what? Illumination, while not being as bad as I think people say Illumination is, I do think they're kind of dumbing down our kids and the plots of their films. It's not Pixar level. If I was doing a Pixar list, it would look a lot different than this. But there are some movies in there, especially the first two Despicable Me movies. Those are really the only ones I can highly recommend. The other ones, see if you want to. You can look at the tier if you've never seen them and make the decision that way. Illumination, you need to step up your game. I don't think you've given us that movie that has blown me away yet. I do think that is coming because I think they're going to start learning from their mistakes even though they're going to continue to pump out Minions movies, Secret Life of Pets movies, but there has to be a movie that manages to make it to that awesome tier, right? Hopefully, we'll see. I want to know what you guys think. Get in the comments section down below. What do you think of Illumination as a studio? Do you think the movies are as bad as I said or maybe as good as I said? It's really a mixed bag for me, but it doesn't have to be for you. I'm curious to hear your all's thoughts. Thank you so much for watching this video. These tier lists are a lot of fun. I want to see what you guys want me to do next in the comments down below in terms of tier lists. I said I'm working on a The Office tier list for the characters. Still working on that. One of the hardest things I've ever had to do. And then, uh, there's a possibility that I hit a certain uh, goal that I've been trying to achieve for a long time on this channel this weekend, maybe next weekend, we'll see what happens. But there will be a live stream accompanying whatever happens. I'm not going to spoil what it is. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and I'll see you guys very soon.